Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the two-time Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its expanded fourth edition, plus designer of an entire line of medical kits specifically made for the off-grid medic. Traumatic injuries occur in the tens of millions every year in the United States. According to the CDC, close to 2 million victims of trauma require hospitalization annually, with 167,000 incidents ending in death in one recent year. In normal times, trauma victims have the benefit of access to an infrastructure that allows a rapid stabilization and transport to a modern medical facility. The off-grid medic, however, has no such access, but is just as, or face it, more likely to be confronted by traumatic injuries. Group members unaccustomed to activities of daily survival, say chopping wood for fuel, could easily end up requiring intervention by somebody with medical skills and supplies in the event of a mishap. Today, let's talk about open wounds. An open wound is any injury that breaches the skin. Skin is your natural armor. It prevents the invasion of microbes into the body that could become life-threatening. Typical open wounds include abrasions. An abrasion occurs when your skin rubs or scrapes against a rough or hard surface. A motorcyclist road rash would be one example. Bleeding is usually minimal, but the wound needs to be scrubbed and cleaned to avoid infection. Then there's punctures. A puncture wound is a hole created by sharp projectiles, like nails, needles, or the bites of certain animals. Some punctures may not visibly bleed, but can be deep enough to damage internal organs, or at least increase the risk of infection. Lacerations. For this video, we're going to define a laceration as a cut that goes through both layers of the skin. The upper layer is the epidermis, the lower layer is the dermis. Skin lacerations expose the structures underneath to the risk of contamination. Accidents with knives, tools, and machinery may cause lacerations that even cut deeply into internal organs, like the liver, causing extensive bleeding. And then there's avulsions. An avulsion is a tearing away of skin and the soft tissue that's underneath it. Avulsions usually occur during violent penetrative trauma, such as some crush injuries or shrapnel wounds. In many cases, they bleed heavily and rapidly, requiring rapid action to prevent a tragic outcome. All of these injuries need to heal. There are four stages of soft tissue wound healing. Hemostasis, that is bleeding control, inflammation, proliferation, which is cell reproduction, and maturation or remodeling. Most injuries heal in disorder, although wounds can progress or suffer setbacks based on various factors. Hemostasis is the beginning of the healing process, so let's talk about that. The first step is when vessels immediately constrict right after the trauma to decrease the flow of blood. Next, clotting factors called platelets and a protein called fibrin stick together and form a mesh plug that seals the break in the blood vessel, and further clotting then occurs to strengthen that plug. Inflammation is the second stage of wound healing and lasts about a week or more. Inflammation both controls bleeding and prevents infection. The fluid produced by inflammation allows the body's repair cells to move to the wound site and eliminate microbes and damaged cells. This produces a swelling, heat, pain, and redness commonly seen during this stage. These can also be, however, signs of infection if they're excessive, if they're prolonged, if they're spreading, or they're worsening over time. The proliferative phase of wound healing produces new tissue made of collagen and other connective materials. Oftentimes, these overlap with the inflammatory phase. The wound begins to contract as new cells grip wound edges and begin to pull them together. Skin cells resurface the injury once the opening left by the wound closes. This can easily last three weeks or more, depending on the depth of the wound. And then there's the maturation or remodeling phase. At this point, the wound scar may be closed and appear pink and oftentimes raised. Over weeks or months or even longer, excess collagen cells are removed and scar thickness is reduced. It should be noted that the healing process and cell reproduction occurs in most tissues, but not all. Certain parts of the brain, for example, might not regenerate new cells. We discuss wound closure in a number of articles and videos, but let's talk about when an open wound must heal in on its own. This process is called granulation due to the granular look of newly formed tissue. The larger the wound, the longer it will take to fill in. Other factors like the age and general health of the victim play a part in the speed of healing, as does the presence of infection. These wounds are usually packed with moist but not soaked sterile dressings, which should be changed at least daily and irrigated with clean water or a dilute antiseptic solution. 
For wounds that are jagged in nature, a portion of skin may require trimming. This is called debridement, and this makes the wound more symmetrical and assures the removal of dead tissue that would impede the healing process. Dead tissue is, well, it's dead, and it contributes nothing to the healing process. As a matter of fact, it hinders it or causes infection. Most wounds you'll encounter in an off-grid setting are going to be dirty. If you close a dirty wound, well, you're going to have sequestered bacteria, bits of clothing, and dirt inside your patient's body. As such, many open wounds should be treated with antibiotics to prevent infection. This is problematic these days as fish antibiotics, uh, commonly used in the past, are no longer a legal option and access to human antibiotics through online sites, at least in the quantity you really need in the off-grid medic, well, that's similarly a problem now. There are natural substances with proven antibiotic properties, such as raw, unprocessed honey and garlic, and these may be useful in survival scenarios. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net.